slow Wi-Fi. A private GP <laughs> only visits twice a week and there's no hair salon. That's according to inspectors that uh, that all makes the Der Derwent side, Derwent side, I've got to say that right, removal centre in Durham inhumane. Now, the Home Office have been urged to reconsider whether it's suitable to house detainees in a remote area. So is it reasonable um, to accommodate people in these conditions? Well, to discuss, going head-to-head, -head, Nigel Nelson and also Ben Habib. Nigel Nelson, is it inhumane? There's slow Wi-Fi. No hairdresser, no hair... But the Wi-Fi is there to power the iPods, which can be used for translating purposes. So, um, obviously, that would be quite useful. But the it's slow, it's slow, it's there. But I have slow Wi-Fi in areas of my house. Yes, but, it, but the, the slowness means they can't actually use the, use the iPads to go and do, do the translating. So they're given iPads so they're as given well. IPads. They're given iPads as well. Oh, yeah. dear. So the uh, Wi-Fi slow, they're given iPads on. as well. When you see oh, what these, right. these places are, they're not prisons. They are no. removal centres to try and get people out of the country. Because it takes so long to remove people, yep. because we're really bad at that, they might have to stay there for 18 months. During that period, they ought to, they, we, we need to make sure that there's no unrest, and the easiest way of doing that is just show a bit of dignity. So, yes, to have a, have a Wi-Fi there, yes, to have hair salons. I was at a, um, a, a hotel last week, a, 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 a migrant hotel, and they've just built a sort of um, a temporary school for the children. These are the kind of things that you need to actually be humane. To attract more people to come to your to country illegally. To be humane illegally. to the people to who are To attract here. more people to come to your country Not illegally. Attracting them, I, mean, I think it would do if I thought that I might... If I, I'm there in a tent in France, which is what you have when yeah. you're about Bending to cross, for Bending for myself. And I think, ooh, I can get slow Wi-Fi and a hair salon. <laughs> I'll take it. What Free medical that? assistance. And an iPad <laughs> as well. Free medical <laughs> assistance, <laughs> dental care, cash in your pocket. No it's a huge NHS. deterrent coming to the UK, no, no. isn't it? <laughs> Come to the UK, you're not going to get good Wi-Fi. No, I mean, the whole thing is just absolutely absurd. And we had the story the other day of illegal migrants staying in four-star hotels in Pimlico, you know, where it costs a few million quid to buy a house. Extraordinary. And we don't treat our own anywhere remotely as generously as we treat these people who have illegally entered the UK. Let's not forget that. Well, they and haven't they illegally haven't come, entered the UK. But they so have illegally entered the they're UK. They're asylum they, seekers, they so they can't be <laughs> We've illegal. had this debate, Nigel. And we have, yes, I know. And they're coming from <laughs> France, which itself is beginning to look a bit like a war-torn country, but it's still a civil... I think it's accepted that France is is a civilized country. They're not coming from Syria or from Pakistan. They may have originated there, but they're coming from France. And we have to Through remember that. Through other countries along the way. So yes. it's not a French problem. And they've also paid a lot of money to do it. But we have yeah. to remember that. Yeah, but, but it's not a French problem per se. I mean, that, that, that suggests, oh, let's send them back to France. Why uh, not? Absolutely. Well, well, Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Well, all right. Sorry. Let's, let's turn, it, turn that on its head. Why should France not introduce a system by saying to each asylum seeker, Where's your destination? Oh, it's the UK. We'll get a boat and we'll take you over to the UK. Isn't that what they're kind that's, of doing? That, the that, that's exactly that, is, that is what you're arguing, to take them back to France, but, no, where they don't belong effect. there in the first place. How many, how many, how many would-be refugees do you see leaving UK shores to go to France? None. Why? Because the UK provides much better setup for them than France does. The whole deterrent thing isn't working because we do doing nothing to create a deterrence to come to the UK. As I've said many times on the show, the second you get into British territorial waters, you're welcomed with open arms, given a life jacket, a blanket, a cup of tea, a bar of chocolate, and whisked off to a four-star hotel, up to Durham if you're really unfortunate. But which, by Durham the way... Durham is beautiful. Durham is beautiful, Killed but it's been, it's, it's been painted as some kind of, um, you know, uh, dystopia for, 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 these, for these illegal migrants. Well, it's and remote, so it's not fair. I read, I read that they had <laughs> a ratio of 97 staff to 17 That's right. migrants in but one of these But there are more facilities. migrants on their way. I mean, in fairness, that was the idea. It wasn't just going to, be, going to remain that way. Well, we but know the, there are more more migrants the, on the we way. Know we that. see them arriving every day. <laughs> but, but, because, yes, because we're, we're, not, we're not doing enough to deal with the, the, the root causes of the problem. The root cause of the problem is that we are not enforcing our international rights and legal... Uh, our international legal rights to stop these boats at the point that they seek to enter our territorial waters and refuse to allow them entry. And that requires force. That requires border force to do what the name suggests, use a bit of force in our territorial waters to push these boats back into France. If these people have, of their own, dis of their own free will, made the decision to take that 
risky journey into our water, they can equally turn their boats round and go straight back to France. Why are we taking them to Germany, which they may well have passed through, or Belgium, or Hungary, or any other any other European country they it's, may have come well, through? Well, France, that's, Why France's, is it France? that's France's problem. No, it's not. The reason they come to Calais is to come to Britain. Yeah, I know. So from, no, I got that. So, so sure. from, from France's <laughs> point of view, yeah. it becomes our problem because, that's, because they're trying to get into our country. But, OK. Answer this then, Nigel. Why did we pay France 50 million quid two years ago, 55 million, uh, sorry, 50 million quid three years ago, 55 million quid two years ago, 63 million quid last year, and now we've promised to pay half a billion pounds to stop this from happening? To the try whole... and persuade France to deal with what is essentially our problem. What we should no, be doing, no, what we should Nigel, be doing is trying to get returns agreements back into, into place. They did work back in, the, uh, the, uh, in 2018, 2019, before we left the EU. What, the Dublin? Yes. The, 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 the net number of uh, illegal... Uh, yeah, 36. Well 36 done. Well, no, actually, 36 no, in, people in, were sent in, back in on that In 2018, agreement. the number of people who crossed by boat was 297. The number of people we sent back to European countries under Dublin was 125. One in three went back to Europe. But, Nigel, over the four-year period before we Brexited, as Nana absolutely correctly just said, 36 net went back to Europe. That was it under the Dublin Agreement. Yeah, but, but we I'm, would still be... <laughs> I've just given you figures which showed 125 went yeah, back. In one when, year. When, in when one figures, year. Can I when the say, figures can were I much smaller. Say, yeah, well, 125 isn't really very many at no, all. No, it's not, but it's but one in three this, of the ones who came over. Yeah, but, but, this problem will not stop until we stop it in the channel. And we've got to take a firm position on it. We've got to develop some political will to defend our borders. This is an invasion. It, it, it is an invasion. Look, There's yeah. no other way to describe it. And Suella Braverman's absolutely right to do it. Now she needs to take robust physical action in the channel. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the cruise ship notion then? I think I would be... Uh, well, why not cruise ships in the channel or to stop people from actually, when they get to the, across our waters, they go straight into the cruise ship and then we process them from there. Why, what's wrong with that well, idea? I mean, cruise ships, people pay to get on whether whether you put them on a cruise ship or you process, process them on land, they can't, they can't actually claim asylum under the law until they reach British territory. Okay, so, so that's the first thing. Well, that, that's, uh, so they're so in the, the cruise the ship answer then is, processing uh, there, can't your you? Your processing idea is absolutely right. The quicker we process people... On the cruise ship rather than them coming on... So you actually have a set of cruise ships out there. Not only would it act as a You deterrent. have to be physically on British yeah. land to claim asylum. So, but, but, so not on the cruise ship. But if you're on a cruise ship, can you not have your uh, um, asylum claim processed you, in the cruise ship, if you're if, on if British it's waters, a British ship, it won't be under British, British law. You're on British waters. So if you have cruise ships, I would, I would literally... I know some people will say, oh, that's really inhumane, but no, I wouldn't. I'd be there, ready to receive people as they come across, and I'd put them in the cruise ships. They wouldn't even come onto British soil, as in terra firma. They'd stay on British waters. They'd be on the cruise ship. I'd process them quickly. I don't know if you'd have to change the law for why, that. I'm not sure you'd have to change the law But why can you not process people quickly? And then if they, are, if they are not meant to be here, then you can certainly take them back on a ship or whatever it is from there to where they need to go. Well, I mean, I don't know What's whether legally you would, you would need a change in the law to actually put an asylum... To, to process an asylum seeker offshore. At the moment, But, but it's can't. still British territory. I don't see why... I mean, this uh, would be If they're on a British stop. ship, they will be subject to British law. Yeah. Well, if that's, yeah. if that's the yeah. case, I'm not against, against any, anything that would actually make um, processing them quicker. But would you not be complaining that the Wi-Fi might not be that good on the ship or the room might not be big enough or they might not have a salon on board or maybe there's <laughs> two to a room? Well, they probably, have a, they probably have hair salons on board if they're using a cruise ship. Exactly. Why and if the Wi-Fi w well, was rubbish, you'd just go back to the operators. <laughs> <laughs> so we agreed. Cruise ships are maybe the way forward. That's what they say. <laughs>